This 16th installment of the Conebox Show is also the first to be presented virtually. 43 works were selected for the 2020 International Conebox Show by juror Winnie Owens Hart. The show opened at Brockers Good Earth Clays in Lawrence, Kansas in January of 2020. The exhibition of these tiny works ran through February. The show was then to travel to Richmond, Virginia to be on display for the duration of the Ansika Conference. However, the COVID pandemic preempted the beloved annual ceramics gathering, the effects of which are ongoing. Although these works are small, the creativity behind them is so enormous that we held the show for a year in order to present this virtual version for the 2021 online Ansika Conference. In addition to sharing this view of all of the pieces as they were displayed in the physical world in Brocker's retail space, we have included a detailed view of each piece, including 360-degree panoramic shots, close-ups, and in some cases, information directly from the artists about their inspiration, approach, materials, processes, and techniques. Bill Brocker's concept for the Kohnbach Show arose from a desire to select an exhibition directly from the actual ceramic object which he could hold in his hand and view from all angles. While we know that nothing can replace the experience of seeing a show of three-dimensional works with one's own eyes, we hope that this enriched video can fill some of the void COVID has left in our creative outlets and inlets. Let these works and the words of their artists inspire you to create in your own studios, and be sure to watch for entry information for the next International Conebox Show, underwritten by Brockers Good Earth Clays, sponsored by the Edward Orton Jr. Ceramic Foundation, and with support from the Rick and Alita Rogers Family Foundation. We appreciate the past and current sponsorship of purchase awards from Aardvark Ceramic Supplies, Bailey Pottery Supply, Brockers Good Earth Clays, Conart Kilns and Tucker's Pottery Supply, Dolan Tools, l, l Kilns, The Potter's Shop Studio and School, Spectrum Glazes, Standard Ceramic Supply, Stone Leaf Pottery, Trinity Ceramic Supply, Ann Brocker, Cindy Brocker and David Sturm, and Don and Inga Balch. You can learn more about the International Conebox Show at www.theconeboxshow.com. A college pottery class was my introduction to clay. Over time, I continued to explore the creative possibilities of clay while working in my small home studio and encouraging my students to do the same as a K-12 art educator. My experiments with Raku fired ceramics began several years ago using a small electric kiln set up in my barn. The metallic and iridescent colors produced during the reduction step of firing, creating intriguing and unpredictable results, was my initial attraction to Raku. The experimentation continues with a variety of Raku and alternate fire techniques in addition to building wood fire Raku kilns. The Conebox show provided the opportunity to use a mix of clay media and methods, which eventually evolved into three different sculptural pieces. The Cone Throne and Lazarus were created from a desire to recycle a container of spent cones sitting on the shelf near my kiln and finish them with Raku firing processes. The cones were used as a decorative element on the throne and were used to lift Lazarus, illustrating the moment when he was raised from the dead. Lazarus was selected as Best in Show by Conebox juror Winnie Owens Hart. Following the close of the show, this piece will go to the Orton Foundation to reside in their permanent collection. A fondness for Van Gogh and watching too many HGTV home improvement shows was the catalyst for Remodel, Bedroom at Arles with Ensuite. Every master artist should have a master bedroom with Ensuite, and Van Gogh's Bedroom at Arles was the ideal painting to convert this idea into a 3D rendition, which includes several of the themes from his compositions. Hannah Brust was a junior at Doan College in Nebraska when she created her piece Deathbed, which features a rabbit fighting a snake on a bed of dead leaves made out of stoneware, glaze, and nail polish. Brust told Doan's online newspaper, Getting accepted really made me look at what my future holds. I have really succeeded this year through my art, and I'm really starting to think that grad school could be a possibility for my future. 
As an artist, I am finally getting the recognition I've always dreamed about. As a student, I get to watch all of these doors open and am free to choose whatever path fits me best. Deathbed was selected as a Juror's Choice Award in the 2020 International Phone Box Show. Following the close of the show, this piece will reside in the permanent collection of Juror Winnie Owens Hart. Making has always made me happy, and I have been creating one thing or another since I was a child. Although I did and still enjoy working with lots of different materials, my love of clay began in high school, where I took my first ceramics class and was instantly hooked. It was at this time that I remember seeing a poster for one of the earliest Conebox shows. That was the first time that I recall tiny ceramics being recognized as something of value in the clay community. This was important because I have always tended to work on a smaller, intimate scale, and the Conebox show helped to validate and solidify my earliest aesthetic ideas. Over the years, I have been a loyal follower of the Conebox show, entering nearly every installment of the show and being fortunate to participate in many years and most recently been awarded a Juror's Choice Award in 2020. All of Dish with Picks will reside in the Brocker permanent collection following the close of the show. Like many of the pieces I make, this year's entries are functional objects with a twist. I am inspired to make work that makes connections between people, to help make daily rituals less mundane, and to bring joy into everyday moments. Ideas often start with a question. How can I make simple acts of eating, drinking, serving more enjoyable and encourage people to slow down and really be in the moment? My three pieces, Olive Dish with Picks, A Shoal of Appetizer Forks, and Rocking Bud Vase are all playful and intricately detailed, but also useful, recognizable, and accessible. Ultimately, they are objects that I myself would like to use, and they make me smile. I hope that my work is able to make other people happy, too. Hi. My name is Hilde Lombrecht. I live in Ottawa, Canada, where I work as a ceramicist since 2012. My home studio has three spaces, one for making and drying, one for glazing and a separate kiln room. I used to be a biologist and naturally my connection with nature shines through in my ceramics. My main work evolves around climate change and other human-caused disturbances of ecosystems. I express my concerns through large ceramic installations comprised of multiple pieces, often in the order of hundreds to thousands. Bluefin tuna is life-size at six feet long. In between the ceramic planktonic pieces, I incorporated plastic garbage to make a statement about the plastic contamination in our oceans and even our food. I recently finished Bloom, another installation where I used highly detailed plankton sculptures. It measures 12 feet long and depicts a harmful algal bloom, something that occurs more frequently now due to climate change. The Bloom species fluoresce in the dark like their real life counterparts. It takes me about a year to finish these time consuming large installations, also counting the research that I do to thoroughly understand my subject matter. In between, I just have to make something that I can finish within a few days, like the pieces that I made for the 2020 Orton Cone Box Show. From the Ministry of Funny Hats offered me an escape from the political turmoil of the last couple of years. I made finders keepers after a visit to the dentist, which made me think of the theft of my son's baby teeth during our move to Canada. What tends to get lost offered me closure to one of my installations about the precarious state of coral reefs. Recently, with diminished opportunities to show my work due to COVID, I have opened a store on Etsy for small functional pieces for home and garden. Pots, spoons, plant markers and more to come. And last but not least, a big thank you to the Bracker family for making us shine and for all the efforts they have done with regards to the Orton Combox show. Thank you very much.
As an undergraduate, I started working with clay primarily as a sculptural form. These clays were about trompe l'oeil pieces, but they were also pop art. After graduation, I focused on art education, and the next 25 years were spent becoming more proficient at wheel throwing and making functional ceramics. I went through a period of not producing any art, but I did produce a wonderful daughter, and did not pick up any clay again for a few years. I am now once again immersed in that wonderful squishy stuff I love to play with. Trompe l'oeil literally translates from French to mean fools the eye. It is an art technique that uses realistic imagery to create an optical illusion that the objects depicted are in fact real. Put simply, trompe l'oeil is the art of illusion. It is a game artists play with spectators to raise questions about the nature of art and perception. Clay inspires the viewer to interact with the pieces, to touch them, to feel their texture. My name is Heather Rosamond, and I'm a ceramic artist from Los Angeles, California. Incandescent tephra and diaphanous magma from my Wonder Portal series are my entries into this year's Cone Box show. My Portal series are intended to focus on wonder. I want people to look at them and through that hole, that entrance, to be able to uh, think about their own imagination, their own, the content in their own head, rather than a screen that is filled by somebody else. Wonder portals are a structure that is meant to focus people's awareness so that they observe, they're almost challenged to observe their own identity, their ideas, their individuality. And my challenge is to combine a primitive aesthetic with modern sensibilities. recent pieces focus on working with clay as if it were fabric or paper. My love of fabric, the prints, and the way it wrinkles and folds comes from my grandma. She used to sew matching outfits, blankets, and dolls for my sister and me. I love looking back at the pictures and seeing the time and love that went into them. I love the way the light catches the folds of fabric on special garments. I grew out of those clothes, but a ceramic piece is forever. <laughs> So good morning, this is a process piece from the Rights of a Child plates that I make based on the Declaration of the Rights of a Child from the United Nations. Each plate has a separate phrase on it written in braille. As you can see I've used a black clay body because the black, it reminded me of the blackboards at elementary school. This plate happens to say a name and you can see uh, the imagery coming out as I begin to pu pull away the paper templates. So this is step four in the process. Step one was to throw the plate. 
Step two was to trim the plate. Step three was to slip the plate with the templates and to do the braille. And step four, as you can see, is to, um, to take the, the paper templates away. And then there's a couple more steps involved, but there we are, the rights of the child. A name, a home, to be safe, to play, to be loved, protection, education, a childhood. In this series of three cups and saucers, it was fun to play with scale and see how many could fit comfortably inside the cone box and still be big enough to be usable as cups. Based on tableware that I make, the shapes are very simple so that the bright colors and graphic lines on the surface can really stand out. The surfaces are painted with exuberance and intended to bring joy. The Raku chickens start off as small cups, wheel thrown off the hump. I use a Raku clay body, standard 295. While still on the wheel, I begin forming them into the chicken shape. Once off the wheel, I trim and shape by hand and add the comb to the head. After a bisque fire, I apply a red underglaze for the comb and some white crackle Raku glaze for the chicken's body. Then I fire them in my Raku kiln and once the glaze has matured, I remove them from the kiln and place them in a newspaper and straw-lined metal can for post-fire reduction. Once they have been cleaned and dried, I will rub on some tongue oil with a cloth to give it a nice finish. Hello, my name is Bernadette Esperanza Torres. I'm a ceramicist that lives and works in Kansas City, Missouri. This is my ceramic figurative sculpture called the Inspirational Yaga. I once read a story about an earth goddess made out of clay and this has porcelain flowers that are rising from her hands or falling down as rain. Um, I'm a daughter of a florist. I grew up in a flower shop and people would always come around for celebrations or births or deaths and um, flowers are a very intricate part of my sculptures. They're always living and dying during very important parts of life. I feel that the, the flowers are like souls of people. So thank you so much and my website is BernadetteTorres.com.
Bruegel I and Bruegel II is part of a series of small sculptures called the Bruegels. Few of them can be seen in my website. The name is inspired by the paintings of Bruegel the Elder, the 16th century Flemish painter who painted working class people in village scenes. The upper class reference to the first and second, as in Edward I, suggests that these people also deserve recognition despite their humble status. I like to explore attachments among objects and to use different techniques. Therefore, I chose to position the supposedly old-time sculptures on a ready-made glass base. <laughs>